My story this week comes from the new scientist. It was one of their main stories of the week, of the month, I think. The question of, can you think yourself young? Now, that doesn't mean, can you think yourself young? Like, can you think yourself a lovely guy? I think myself a (laughs) young, lovely guy. (laughs) Can you think yourself, basically, can your thoughts control um, your aging? Um, And so increasingly... Uh, research has shown that subjective age has an impact on your health and lo- what they what is called longevity, which is how long you live. Now, subjective age means basically how old you feel. Mm. So how old do you guys feel? I personally feel like I'm still a child and I shouldn't be in an adult world because I'm not an adult. I'm just I'm just an imposter. I'm a teenage imposter and that's it. I have no idea how old I am. I regularly need to check. I know I'm somewhere between being 16 and in my mid to late 20s. I thought you were going to go. You didn't ask the further. question, Corey. The I question don't was feel not whether you know how no, old you are. No, I don't feel are. any certain age. I genuinely feel all of the. I don't know how old I am because I don't know how old oh. I feel. I forget. Honestly, I go, to, I go to buy alcohol and they're like, hey, how old are you? And I'm like, seven. Oh, no, oh. no. Hold on. I know this one. <laughs> I, I give them the wrong answer that I just to show them my ID because I don't know. When I get ID'd, I still feel nervous because I'm like, oh, will they, will they accept it? Because I still feel like 18, 19, despite the fact that I'm nearly 23. <laughs> yeah. How old do you feel, Luke? I generally feel around 19, 20. I think maybe tw- like early 20s could be the case. Now I'm 26. So um, that's pretty good. That bones quite that bodes quite well for me. Uh, and it also sounds like it bodes quite well for you guys. If you both, I mean, Jamp feels <clears throat> like a teenager and Corey feels uh, he's unsure, but definitely <laughs> still like you should be being ID'd. So that's, that's, <laughs> that's younger than you are. So your subjective age is younger than you are. But the thing is, is just because you have a different subjective age to your physical age, that doesn't mean that you can necessarily control your subjective age either. When I asked you, you kind of queried, well, mm. how, old do I, how old do I kind of feel? It's not necessarily a decision. You can't necessarily decide to feel young if, you, if it then means you will then live longer. Or can you? Now, basically, scientists have worked hard to discover that age in the way that we normally think about it, like age as in how long you've been alive, how long you have, rot- how many times you've rotated around the sun, um, is a pretty rubbish measure of how long you're actually going to live. Um, now, this is shown by the fact that there are wildly different ages in different parts of the world and also wildly different ages between family members even. So there's this idea called the biological aging clock, which measures different things about your body and your genetics to see how you're actually aging, like how quickly you're aging. And this includes, like I said, your genes, um, but also like your, your metabolism. And it can be higher or lower than your actual age. And you can affect it by, for example, exercising or drinking less, that kind of thing. But on top of that, physical aging might not always predict how long you'll live either. Meaning mm-hmm. physical aging, meaning like, how how long how quickly your body is aging you can also be aged by your psychology and how that changes so according to a gerontologist which is the study of aging um laura carstensen um her work in the 90s showed that young people are you ready for this because this might hurt young people tend to pursue knowledge about the world great they're enthusiastic and they're more sociable than older people but they are also more superficial they are more impulsive and this is the one that hurts more emotionally fragile yeah 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 Yeah, that's true yeah according to you guys snowflakes um Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. You According to me, uh, don't call me Gov, mate. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Go on. According to the polling company YouGov, not Corey Gov, <laughs> young people, more than half of them vote for Labour or for the Liberal Democrats in the UK. Older people generally vote for the Tories. Older people also stop exploring. They focus oh. on finding meaning and intimacy and sharing wisdom. Sharing wisdom. That just that sounds to me. It's like instead of actually doing anything, I'll just tell people to do things. Mm. No, mm. I mean there are things about life that um, may seem one way in the short term and may seem another way in the long term. And the source of those long term things, especially subjective things about life, can be old people because oh. they have lived through life. Absolutely, I don't disagree that old people tend to have wisdom. I just yes. disagree with the concept that. Um, You should listen to them all the time. I think when I think about like, if I go picture an old man in my head, I just, I just picture an old man sat in a chair 
talking about something being like let me tell you about this thing that yeah. i did in my life <laughs> yeah this is the, i feel like i feel like a lot of people get to a certain age and they think that everything they have to say is wisdom <laughs> like you got some wisdom in there man but uh there's a lot of, a lot of other stuff there too nothing can beat prawn cocktail crisps wow so wise thank you incredible is that your thing. wisdom gem thank you my old age wisdom <laughs> wow the dog of wisdom is here <laughs> With racism his wisdom. is fine probably that's the more wisdom you'd probably get from a granddad mm. This yeah. granddad disagrees. <laughs> Good. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so being subjectively young does correlate with better health, better life expectancy, and general well-being. Older subjective age correlates with inflammation in the body oh. and an old-looking brain. Mm. I imagine that's to do with like the amount of grey matter you but have. All but brains are old extra looking wrinkly. because they're so wrinkled. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Babies have really smooth brains and they just get more wrinkles throughout their life. <laughs> That's why they're so dumb, babies, because there's no yes. smooth brains. Smooth brain babies. Anyway, carry on. So a paper in 2018 from Florida State University followed 17,000 people and it confirmed that subjective age is a pretty accurate predictor of health. Figuring out subjective age is a little more difficult than you might think because your answer can change. If you're feeling particularly bad, maybe you'll feel closer to your actual age. Or if you're feeling particularly good, maybe you'll feel younger than your actual age. Um, and like other things in psychology, it essentially seems to have a thing called a hedonic treadmill. Corey, you can explain a hedonic treadfill, treadmill to us. A treadfill? <laughs> yes, I can. No, <laughs> hedonic treadmill is basically the idea that... Um, no matter like whatever whatever your material conditions are, mm -hmm. you will kind of revert to um, the same level of sort of happiness. Baseline. So yeah, there's a sort of baseline happiness that you that you'll that you'll get to. So you could win the lottery and your happiness will shoot up, and then after a while, you that will become the norm, and mm -hmm. so it'll just go back to this normal baseline because it mm -hmm. won't be new anymore. This is why, like, when people are like, "Oh, this promotion will make my life so much better," and then they get the promotion, and then after a while, they're like. I'm used to this now. I yeah. want another promotion. <laughs> yeah, which is why you need yeah. to constantly improve your life to, yes. to always feel joy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yes, like happiness, there is a baseline subjective age that you return to um, that isn't necessarily as affected by circumstantial things happening in your life. Um, so when I ask basically how old do you feel, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a predictor of your health, although it is pretty positive in the case of both of you. So my advice here would be pay attention to how you feel over the next few weeks and that will give you a better idea. Or you can alternatively ask how old do you generally feel? And I generally feel younger than I am. And it sounds like that's kind of the same um, for you guys. Now, if you want an even better idea than that, as with everything in the world right now, we were trying to make it better with artificial intelligence. So a mm. person called Alex Zar... Oh, goodness me. Z Z oh, See, no. it's I read hard. This it's thought, hard. You got I read, it. <laughs> no, I read this and thought, I'm not going to be able to say this out loud. And then I did successfully figure it out, but I've completely forgotten. Alex Zarvor... Onkov, um, who founded a company called Deep Longevity and is also an aging researcher, took some uh, data from a project which studied 7,125 to 75 year olds across a time of around 30 years. And they were asked questions as, as wide ranging as physical health, mental health, personality, beliefs, and social and sex lives. Mm. They were also asked a question like, how old do you feel most of the time? Like I just sort of mentioned there. Now this model, firstly, it agreed with the fact that psychology does change over time. Like the way you feel and think about the world is pretty much on a on a trend across most people. So you, you and I and Jamp will probably end up, and everyone really will probably end up a little bit more Tory as we grow up. Some oh, won't, no. there'll be outliers, but uh, no. Good luck with that. Uh, nah, good luck looking nah. back at your at your childhood life and going, oh, <laughs> or, or not. Maybe we'll be emotionally outliers. fragile. You mean when we get <laughs> to the point where we're not being completely screwed over by the Tory party, so we think, yeah, maybe it's all right. Mm. We'll screw other people over. I don't want to do that. No. I don't want to get there. No. If I well, ever vote all... Tory, shoot me in the head, please. Um, no, don't. Wow. Don't do that. Don't. No, I don't want to nope, put nope, that we out will. there. We will. We will. <laughs> oh, darn it. <laughs> Live <in> silence. <laughs> <laughs> so the best predictor of subjective age is physical health. That's probably not shocking. But the <laughs> second best predictor is not something you'd expect. Have a guess. What do you think it will be? No idea. Not a clue. Sexiness. Yeah, hotness. I You're not actually too far off, Corey. Um, what would oh. something you'd expect to be like a thing that d determines how quickly you're going to age and die? Oh, how much, how much sex you have. 
Is that it? Well, oh. more specifically, it is when asked the question, how satisfying do you expect your sex life to be in 10 years? Oh, oh. oh dear. Oh my God. That makes sense though, doesn't it? So being more open and optimistic helps you to live longer. Feeling positive about aging rather than negative about aging. So embracing aging helps. So like quite, quite um, interestingly, the more you don't like aging, the quicker you'll age. No. But the more um, you like well aging, as... the less you'll age. That's awful. Well, what if, if, I, if I really like aging, I'll have to convince myself that I don't like it so that I can enjoy aging. Because otherwise it won't happen as oh, much. Dear. You see? Do you understand? I... Understand, but I reject the premise of your. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, as well as this is the one we're all screwed at. Being extroverted is a good predictor of uh, long-term health. But that can change oh, over time. Actually. It can. Well, let us hope. <laughs> Let's hope we all become extremely extroverted Tories. Oh wait, no, not Tories. <gasps> extremely extrover extroverted Labour voters. Predictor of wait, yeah, to, to green since since like. Green is more left wing than Labour. Does that mean that you'll be even younger? Mm. Well, I don't know. I didn't look at the green. It's such a tiny little sliver of the yeah, graph that it doesn't really show up. Wow, no one looks at them. Yeah, you're right, Jan. No. <laughs> <laughs> so the goal of all this was basically to be able to create advice for living a healthier life. If you feel older than your age, that seems to be bad. For example, if you were 60 and you had a subjective age of 65, oh so you feel 65, you're twice as likely to die each subsequent year mm. than somebody with a subjective age that maxes, matches their physical age. Oh, wow. yeah. Twice as likely. Um, so yeah, I'm that's my story. You can, to a certain extent, think yourself young. Woo, to a certain fantastic. Extent. I'm just going to start skipping birthdays now. <laughs> I'm going to convince myself that I'm actually younger than I am. And I'll, I'll live forever, you know? No, no, Corey, because that if you try and lie to yourself, that is not embracing aging, so you'll age faster. Oh, no. Catch, but I'll, I'll embrace 22. the physical aging. I will simply just convince myself that I'm younger. Therefore, mm. I'll feel younger than I actually am. You just have to start voting for Labour extra hard. Just vote for Green. Like, really really <laughs> aggressively. Yeah. You want in. to live forever, vote for the Green Party. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, they'll stop, they'll, they'll stop the environment dying. Isn't that great? <laughs> if you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on all SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SciGuysPod to find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs>